Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about data types in Java. Now, a data type is basically just a type of data that we can work with inside of our Java program. And Java as a programming language gives us certain types of data that we can represent inside of it. And generally, when we're talking about data types, we're also going to be talking about variables. Now, a variable is just a container where we can store a piece of data and we can create different variables that are designed to hold different data types. So I'm gonna walk you guys through what the basic data types are. We're not gonna cover all of them because there's a lot of sort of obscure data types, but I'm gonna show you guys the most useful and the most common data types, and you'll be able to start using them in your Java programs. Down here, we're just gonna create a few different variables, and we're gonna create different variables that store different types of data. So the first type of data that we can store in Java is a string. And a string is basically just a collection of characters that are sort of like strung together. So it's any sort of like textual information. So I can create a variable and I can just create string and I'm just gonna call this phrase. So I'm defining the type of data I wanna store inside of my variable. And then I'm telling Java the name of this variable. And now I can just give it a value. So I can say to be or not to be. So this is like our little phrase. And what I can do is I can actually print this variable out inside of this print line. So I can just say phrase. So all I have to do is type out the name of the variable that I want to access. And when Java sees this, it's basically just going to say, okay, what value is stored inside of the phrase variable? I'm going to print that out to the screen. So you can see over here on the screen when I run my program, it prints out to be or not to be. Awesome, seems to be working. We can also create other variables with different types of data. So another really popular type of data to store in Java are numbers, right? Any type of numbers, if you're doing something with math, you're gonna need numbers. If you're representing something like an age, you're gonna need a number. So why don't we create a variable? Now in Java and really just in general, there's two different types of numbers. And the first type are called whole numbers. A lot of people also call them integers. These are basically counting numbers. So if I was to count from one to 10, I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? They're just whole numbers, numbers that, you know, are just like basic counting numbers. The other type of numbers uh, are referred to as floating point numbers, or sometimes people will call them decimal numbers. These would be numbers like 2.5 or 6.7394 or 7.8, right? Numbers that have decimals after them. Now we can represent both of these types of numbers inside of Java, and we're actually gonna need two different types of containers to do that. So first let's create an integer. Now remember, an integer is just a whole number. I can create an integer by saying int. So this is a keyword in Java. And now we can give this a name. So this could be like an age and I could say age is equal to 35. And you'll notice when we create a number, we don't actually need quotation marks around it like we did up here in this string. We can just type out the number as is. So I could also print out a number onto the screen. So if I just put age down there, now we'll be able to print out the number onto the screen. In addition to an integer, I can also create uh, a decimal number. And there's a couple different ways to create decimal numbers. There's actually two data types that we can use for this. One is called a float and the other one is called a double. I'm just gonna show you guys a double because I think that's a little bit more commonly used. So we can just say double and again, we'll give this a name. So let's say GPA. And let's say someone's GPA is like a 2.7. And so now we're able to store this 2.7 value inside of this GPA double. So I'm only able to use a decimal point because we're saying that it's a double. So if I came over here to this 35 and I gave this a decimal point, you'll see that we're getting this little error message and it's giving us this error because we're basically not able to use a decimal number inside of an integer. So these are the two types of numbers that you're gonna be working with the most. And just know that integers are whole numbers and doubles are decimal numbers. There's another type of data that we can use, which is a character. And a character is kind of similar to a string. So up here we have this string and it's just a bunch of different characters, but a character data type just stores one single character. 
So why don't we put this down here? And to create a character, we can just say char and we'll give this a name. So why don't we store this as like a grade for a test? So someone's grade, let's say they got an B on their test. And in order to create a character, we wanna use these single quotation marks right here. So unlike when I created a string and I use these double quotes, I'm gonna use these single quotation marks. So in here, we'll put the letter that we wanna store. So again, we can only store one single character inside of here. So I can store a capital A, I can store a lowercase a. Really, you can store any character you want. It's only gonna be one character though, that's very important. In addition to string character in double, there's also one more data type that is really gonna come in handy inside of Java, which is called a Boolean. And a Boolean is maybe a little bit less intuitive than like a char, an int, or a double. A Boolean is a true or a false value. And if you're new to programming, you might not understand why we wanna represent a true or a false value, but as you go through this course, you'll understand a lot of times in programming, we want to store true or false data. And a Boolean value can have one of two values, true or false. So I can create a variable and I can either give it a true or a false value. So let's create a Boolean. You just type out Boolean, just like that. And again, we wanna give this a name. So let's say we'll give this a name of is male. So is male will basically store whether or not someone is a male. And I could set this equal to true. And so this is male variable has a value of true. I could also make it false. And in this case, it would be false. But those are the only two values that you can store inside of this is male variable, true or false. And so again, if I wanted to, I could print out any of these variables on the screen. We could print out is male and it'll print out false just like that. We've kind of looked at a bunch of these different data types and for the most part, I would say for a beginner, these are the only data types that you're really gonna need. There are a few other data types in Java that we can get into and we'll probably cover some of them later in the course, but for now just know that these are all the different ways that you can store data. And these data types allow you to store different types of data. Now, one more thing, I just wanna point out that we can also represent these data types without putting them inside of variables. So down here in this system.out.println, I could just say like, 35 and I wouldn't have to store it inside of an age variable. I could just say this and it's gonna know that it's a number. I could say 35.9, it'll know that it's a double. I could say false, I could say true. I could give this a character or I could just give this a string. So I don't need to store these values inside of variables. A lot of times you're gonna to want to, but if you want, you can just access them directly inside of something like a print line. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.